Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about how do narcissists do what they do? How do they get that supply? Okay, because a lot of narcissists are very successful in, in getting what they want and they manipulate by doing it. But I'm going to talk about the different ways that narcissists get the supply that they're after, whether it's sex, money, a place to live, whatever it could be. A lot of narcissists know that you may be looking for love or something like that. So a male narcissist is going to try to win you over by trying to show you love. They may know that you're looking for love. Maybe you're looking for marriage. Maybe you're looking for kids. So they're going to portray and future fake all of these things. The narcissist studies you. Okay, they study you to see what you're after, what you want, and they study you to see if you have the supply that they want, whether it's sex, money, a place to live, or just ego flattery. But narcissists know that in order to win you over, a lot of times they have to be good looking or try to be good looking. And I'm going to go into this now. Not all narcissists are good looking, okay. But the narcissists that are trying to win you over, trying to get you thirsty for them, a lot of these narcissists go to the gym. They go on a regular basis. Their body is how they sell themselves, how they win you over, and they have you lusting for them, all right? So you're going to find a lot of narcissists in the gym, full of themselves, staring at themselves in the mirror, you know, who's looking at me, really, you know, perfectionists when it comes to looking good. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that everybody that goes to the gym is a narcissist or people that care about how they look is a narcissist. No, but a narcissist is hyper concerned about how they look because that's their bread and butter in attracting supply. They're concerned in attract, they want to attract you, right? So they know they have to look good. So they're going to be working out. They're going to be, you know, really concerned on, you know, their appearance, how they dress, how they smell, you know, that's the physical way that a narcissist tries to, you know, get supply by being attractive. All right. Then you have female narcissists that are very concerned and, and overly concerned with how they look that go to the extreme of plastic surgery, okay? They're getting surgery for breasts. They're getting surgery for ass implants. They're getting surgery for lips because they're trying to attract supply, all right? And a lot of these people, understand this, narcissists are insecure, all right? So they want to, they're very concerned with their image. Most of them are, all right? Not every narcissist is like this. And I'm going to go into the narcissist that's not so good looking and how they get supply. But narcissists do this. And that's why a lot of, you know, younger narcissists, they're concerned with their appearance and everything. And as they get older, the way that they attract supply when they know that, you know, they can't win people over so much with their looks and maybe they're trying to get younger supply, they try to get supply with money, okay? Flaunting money, lending you money or gifts of money to try to entice the supply that they want because they can't use their looks because they can't compete with somebody that's 22, all right? If they're like in their 40s or 50s or whatever, so they try different ways to manipulate and get that supply. Now, when you're dealing with a narcissist that is not that attractive, they're going to try to win you over either by money or by charm, by being charismatic, okay? By being the class clown, by making you laugh. They're also going to try to win supply over by giving them a lot of attention. They feel like, oh, if I flood this person with attention, I'm going to be able to fool them and let them think that, oh, I'm so into them, all right? So that's what they'll do. And they'll also try to fool you by 
making you think that you can trust them. And how do they do that? They keep you on the phone night and day. And the narcissist that is after something big is going to do this. They're going, they want to earn your trust. They don't want you to think that they're talking to anybody else or they're doing anything. So they will be on the phone and texting you night and day because they're really after something that you have. Okay. So narcissists, you know, they basically are salesmen and saleswomen that are selling themselves to the supply and they do it in different ways. All right. So like I said, one, they do it by being really, really getting themselves where they look really attractive, their body is kicking. You know, a lot of people get hooked by the narcissist because the narcissist could be a very good looking person and they're lusting after them. And they say later on, oh, I really love them. What did you love about them? They treated you like crap. You didn't love them. You lusted them. Maybe you love the sex. And that's another thing too that I want to bring up. Narcissists try to get, get supply by giving good sex and, and some narcissists don't give good sex because they can't be vulnerable, all right? So they can't completely open up. It's very routine. It's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. They just kind of get off and getting what they want. They don't care about satisfying your needs. This comes later on usually, you know, after they're really tired of you. But in the beginning, a narcissist may try to get that supply by giving some good sex to that person. Now, understand, it's different than making love. A narcissist doesn't really make love because in order to make love, you have to be completely vulnerable and open yourself up to that person. And that's what narcissists can't do. Narcissists are guarded, all right? So, you know, the the sex is going to be purely sex, all right? And, you know, they may show you little signs of affection here or there, fake signs of affection. But to a narcissist, it's purely sex. It's purely that instant gratification. But they will try to, you know, maybe lay down good sex on you and have you to a point where you're like, you know, you're digmatized or, you know, you're lusting after that woman or something because she gave you great sex. All right. This is how a narcissist tries to hook you. They try to hook you too by trying to win over your kids, all right? And this is the dirty narcissist. The dirty narcissist uses children to manipulate you to, so that you will give in to the narcissist. So what are they going to do? They're going to be extremely, extremely nice to your children. They're going to be nicer to your children than they are to you because they feel that the children are an influence on you, that if they butter up that child, you know, that opens the door for them. Let's say they're trying to move into your house and you're a single parent. They're going to butter up those children where they say, oh, I really like so-and-so. Yeah, no, I would love for that person to come live here or something. They're working on the children because they know that's your soft spot is your kids, all right? Or they could work on your friends. You know, narcissists in the beginning want to win over your friends and family. And if they can't, then all of a sudden they're going to grow a hatred for those people and they're going to talk badly about them. They're not going to want you around them. So... You know, they want to influence the people that are around you to influence you so that you trust the narcissist. The narcissist's goal initially is to have you trust them, okay? Because when you trust the narcissist, you're going to give in to that narcissist, whether it's sexually, monetarily, or, you know, whatever they may need, a favor or something like that. So the goal of the narcissist is to earn your trust. So what a narcissist is going to do is they're going to study you. Narcissists are very good. They're very cunning. They're very good at sizing people up. So they've already analyzed you from day one to see, you know, where you are in life, what you're looking for. And this is where they try to mirror you. They'll say things like, oh, I'm very religious too. I go to church or I go to synagogue or I go to mosque every week too. Oh, we could pray together. Oh, I prayed that God would bring me you into my life. 
Oh, you love kids? I love kids. Let's take your kids to the park. Oh, in the beginning, that narcissist is going to mirror you and try to pretend that they're into everything that you're into. They want you to think that they have a great connection with you. And a lot of them will, will, will show their hand because they'll actually say it. And that's a red flag that you're dealing with a shady narcissist because they'll actually say it and it's unnatural. They'll say something to the effect of, oh, we got something, we got a great connection here, don't you think? We got a great vibe. And they'll say that on like the first day, second day, even the first week because their goal is to you know, convince you that you two are a great connection, okay? What I tell you, that the goal is to earn your trust. So narcissists, they're going to, number one, have you lust after them by trying to look good in the beginning or try, try if, you know, if it's not, if they can't win you over with their looks, they're going to try to make you laugh or they're going to try to, you know, be very accommodating or they're going to try to come in as your hero. All right. This is the biggest, you know, misconception that people have when they're dealing with a narcissist. You thought when you got involved with this person, this person was your safety blanket. This person was your savior. This person was somebody that was going to be your rock. And then later on, you realize that the narcissist is not there for you when times are tough, when you are sick, when you have money problems, when you need them for something, they disappear, they ghost. Covert narcissists do this all the time. And then they come back later and they make an excuse, a lame excuse why they weren't there for you. All right. That is a red flag. But the narcissist, the way they get supply is they try to fool you into thinking like they are they are your ride or die in the beginning, okay? And they do that by the consistency that they give you in the beginning, all right? You're thinking, oh, I can rely on them. They're always calling me, you know. And, and the thing is, you know, narcissists may do one or two little good things for you in the beginning. Maybe they'll lend you money. Some will. Or maybe they'll do you a favor or they'll help you out with something in the very beginning, all right? And then you're going to say, wow, they're really nice, you know? And then you're going to think in your mind, oh, I can depend on them. No, you can't. You can't fucking depend on them because they did that in the beginning and it was for a purpose. It was to win you over, earn your trust, and it was fake empathy, all right? Go listen to my podcast on fake empathy of the covert narcissist because this is what they do. They are very, they could be very nice in the beginning. They could tell you a sob story so that you feel badly for them, okay? Or the other way that they get supply is they guilt trip you. They'll do something nice for you. And then later on, they're going to throw it back in your face and say, well, didn't I do that for you? In other words, they might lend you a few bucks, right? Or they may give you a few dollars and say, here, I want you to have this. You know what? I, I, I want you to have this. And then later on, that narcissist is going to ask you for something big, all right? So, you know, they give a little to get a big return down the road. And what are you going to do? You're going to feel bad and you're going to give them that money because you feel bad because they did something small and nice for you. You don't owe anybody anything just because they do a small little gesture for you. All right. And remember this, anytime a narcissist does anything for you, it's never for nothing, okay? They want something out of you. So it's up to you to study this person and say, what are they after? What, what do I have that they want, okay? Are they after me for sex? Are they talking about sex a lot? Are they making sexual innuendos? Is everything like a sexual meme or something like that? Are they talking about money? Are they talking about business? They're always wanting to go into business, are they just breadcrumbing me because they want to use me in their spare time to talk to somebody while they're at their job? You got to figure out what that narcissist wants from you, okay? You know, the way you could tell whether somebody is narcissistic too, you guys, is if they do something and they're not getting anything back in return, 
all right? They're not expecting anything back in return. They're doing it out of the kindness of their heart, all right? Somebody that does something out of the kindness of their heart will never expect a, you to do something for them, all right? They just wanted to do something nice, all right? So the bottom line is narcissists, they will try to hook their supply or manipulate their supply any the best that they can do, all right? So it's either by physical attraction, it's by monetarily, it's by flattery, it's by love bombing, it's by making that connection with you, all right, that, that, that you, you feel like, oh, you have so much in common, all right, maybe they'll do something for your kids or your family to guilt trip you. Um, they want you in a position where you are codependent on them. And that's also the narcissist's goal. Because when they have you codependent on them, they could get what they want out of you. You are dependent on them. So because you're dependent on them, you can't live without them. You need their sex or you need their attention or you need something out of them. You feel you can't live without them. Once that narcissist knows they got you, it's a wrap, you guys. It's a wrap because then they're going to have the control to where they can get whatever they want out of you. And you're going to give in because you're afraid that they're going to leave you. And some of them will actually threaten to leave you and say, well, if you're not happy with the relationship, I'll just leave. This is a scare tactic to make you afraid that they they don't need you and they could just walk out on you and, you know, leave you cold, all right? And they do this when they know that you really are sweating them and, and you know, you don't want to lose the relationship. When they really have that control, they will try to, these little tactics to make you feel like, you know, all, all right, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it, because you're afraid that they're going to leave you, all right? Rule number one is never, ever be codependent on a narcissist or anybody. Because when you're codependent on somebody, then they have control over you. And then you're going to be doing things that you don't want to do, all right? So they, you know, a narcissist, you got to look at what the narcissist is after. If they're after sex, they're going to be very concerned about their appearance to try to look sexy and try to appeal to supply. If they're not sexy, they're going to try to win that supply over by flashing money. The other thing that they do too is they try to impress you, all right? Narcissists are always trying to impress you. Oh, look at the, I send you pictures of a brand new model car. Send you pictures of them at the gym flexing their muscles or working out. You know, send you, you know, tell you about how their job, they were employee of the month, okay? Narcissists want you to think that they're really something, that, you know, you got something, you got the prize of the year. And why do they do that? They do that for their ego, all right? And they do that because they want you to think that, you know, they are the greatest thing that ever walked into your life. And narcissists actually think that they're better than you. All right. They actually think that they're better than you. And that's why they discard so easily because they feel like, you know what? I could do better. I could do better. I could do better. All right. So the thing in the, the joke of it all is they're the ones that are extremely, extremely insecure. So I hope that gives you an idea of how narcissists, how they try to, you know, how they try to get supply. They try to get it with looks. They try to get it with money. They try to get it with charm. They try to get it with future faking, building up this fantasy of this wonderful life with you. They also make you promises, promises we're going to go on vacation, promises we're going to get engaged in four months, promises we're going to have kids, all right? They're big on promises. These are just fucking words. Shall I say it again? These are just fucking words. What have they shown you? What the fuck has that narcissist shown you? All right? And this is what I got to tell you. What has that narcissist done for you? Look back on that relationship when you're sitting there and you're feeling bad about that relationship. What the fuck did that person ever do to, for you? All right? 
People need a reality check. And a lot of times, it's just that you're lusting that narcissist. It's just because you're craving the sex from the narcissist a lot of times. Or it's just that your ego is hurt because they discarded you and thought they were better than you. All right? Who cares what a fucking narcissist thinks? They're a toxic, damaged, messed up person. Their opinion does not matter. All right? You've got to get your respect back and say, okay, I got involved with a shady character. I didn't see them for what they are, but now I know who I am. Never forget who you are, all right? And you say to yourself, I will never put myself in that position again. I will never entertain that narcissist because that narcissist had disrespected me. That narcissist will never, ever get any attention, or get acknowledged by me again. And this is exactly how you take your power back because you have to, you know, accept the fact that you got involved with somebody you, that you thought was something that they weren't, but now you know the game. Now when you see these red flags, the future faking, the inconsistency, the snide remarks, the ghosting, or any red flag, you, you know, exit left. Uh, that's it. That's sign disrespect. I'm out. So the way you got to look at it is, is this person respecting me or is this person not respecting me? Okay. And narcissists don't respect you. Period, dot, end of fucking story. And that is why that narcissist can never love you because they don't respect you and most importantly, they don't trust you. So you will never, ever connect with a narcissist and understand that they will do anything in their power to manipulate supply to try to win them over. Remember what I told you. Narcissists are salesmen and saleswomen, all right? You're dealing with a con that's trying to win you over. So the more that they try to prove themselves of who they are or what they are or something like that, they're trying to always prove who they are, that's how you know you got a fucking fake one, all right? Period, dot, all right? That's how you know. The more they try to prove themselves, the more that you know that they're nothing but an insecure person, okay? I hope that helps you. If it does, please hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast. Have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, Go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Visio where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio. And you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram, the game exp 123 Okay? And have a great day. Mm-hmm.